much and should last a long time. Well, yeah, you would think. I guess. I mean, they're not. They weren't overly expensive, so. Well, at least we don't have wind. Yeah. Yeah. And the sun's trying to shine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess it's about that time. About that time, yeah. And you're welcome to build them out with you. Oh, I bet they would. That's okay. Uh, really Looks like I cleaned out a back of a cattle truck or something. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> uh, Are we there? Yep, I think it's time. Can, can you do me a favor and make sure that that's recording? Okay. Thank you. Red light. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to worship. I, I, I missed the horn praise. That wake, wakes you up. Um, uh, today is a, another wonderful day to gather together to worship God, and I am grateful that you are here, those of you worshiping in person and those of you worshiping online. Um, it's uh, our second Sunday of Advent, and as you've noticed, our setting has changed once again. Uh, we are now in our drive-in our, our drive worship uh, once more, uh, worshiping as the uh, early Methodists did outside. And so I am grateful for the beautiful day God has provided us. It's somewhere in the 40s. You can't hear me? Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, those of you that are worshiping here in person, I encourage you to turn to 100.5 FM to hear me over your radios. We also have some speakers set up, uh, so I'm hoping the camera can hear me there. And those of you here on uh, our live stream, uh, let me know if, if uh, you guys can't hear me or if you need anything. I'll be looking down occasionally. And uh, uh, it's the second Sunday of Advent, and it's the Sunday of peace. And uh, I know all of our neighbors are saying, peace, you're disrupting our peace right now. We're trying to sleep in. Well, I apologize, and I welcome you and encourage you to come and, and join and worship with us as we set this time aside to praise God and... Uh, and to praise God for the sunshine and the relative warmth for a, a December morning. As far as our announcements go, uh, we are continuing to do our online Bible study and, and worship. Uh, but at this point, everything that is going on, that had been going on inside the, the church building, uh, has been uh, suspended until uh, such a time as we are able to go back in and, and return and resume those ministries. I do have uh, one praise, though. There was a wonderful idea at our sister church down at Stella, uh, where we're not having uh, in-person uh, worship uh, as such right now. Uh, but we decided yesterday to go drive around to the folks that were stuck at home and uh, as a little church parade. and. Uh, hold up signs that say, we miss you, we love you, 
and, uh, and just to share and fellowship that. And it's a good reminder that what church looks like, how we do church, uh, can be different from one season to the next, from one day to the next, but it's God's people coming together and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and the love of Jesus Christ with each other. And so I thank God for, for that new expression of that age-old truth. Well, I did email out uh, to everybody uh, the hymns that we're going to be doing today. I encourage you to pull those up on your phone or, or your devices, whether you're here in person or, or at home, and join with me in singing. Raise your voices. Just come together in song. We're going to be singing Holy, 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 three verses for our opening hymn. that we are able to gather together in the midst of our holy God. And we give thanks for those that God has given to us to love on and care for and those, those praises. I want to lift up in praise the, uh, the church parade that I was able to be a part of yesterday and all those that made that possible. I give thanks for our worship today and those that have worked hard to make that possible. Especially give thanks for for Marcy and for Kevin, and uh, and I give thanks for the joy of having William be five months old. It's hard to believe. One more month and he goes on solid food. Pretty soon he'll be moving around and walking and, and causing all sorts of, of challenges, and uh, we look forward to that. We also lift up the concerns in our lives. We lift up those that aren't able to come and worship with us, but long to. We especially lift up uh, a couple from our sister church, Bob and Mona, who uh, are not feeling well and are in need of God's comfort and care and healing powers. Are there others that you would volunteer that we might lift up this day? I know there are some whose names we prefer not to speak, that we invite God's loving power to be rest upon their shoulders. Well, for those that we list and those that we name and those that remain unstated, but forever in our hearts, let us come to God in a time of prayer. And as always, I will begin with a moment of silent prayer. Let us pray.
gracious and loving God, we come to you this day longing for your intervention, longing for you to break into our world, to help us, to help those that are suffering. Our brothers and sisters in our community, our friends and our neighbors who struggle and suffer. For those many thousands that have been made ill or have been called home because of COVID-19. For those souls, for their families, for those grieving, God, we pray for your peace, the peace that passes understanding. God, for those that are fearful about the future, are surrounded by uncertainty, and don't know what to do, God, we pray for your peace. For those that, that worry and long for their neighbors and feel powerless to do anything about it, God, we pray for your peace. And God, we pray that you enable us and empower us to be peacemakers, to share that good news, to love on our neighbors, to help where we are able. And God, we give thanks for every new expression of our faith that we see this year. We give thanks for the faithful souls that continue to worship and continue to reach out to their neighbors with a hand of help and a heart of love. God, we, we pray that your Holy Spirit would fan that fire and, and just spread those good that goodwill and those efforts to be fruitful and to multiply throughout the grieving world. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join with me in our second hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth. peace might be visited upon the whole world. Now is the time in our worship service where we reflect on how God has blessed us and called us to, to minister to his people in the world. And I invite those that, that are gathered here together today, as you are so moved, to reflect on what God is calling you to do to support the ministry of this church. I'll be coming around with the offering plate, and if, if you have a gift that you would like to give to support this ministry, just roll down your window as I come by and, and let me know. For those of you at home, I encourage you to uh, send in those tithes and those offerings uh, to, the, to this church, um, to the address that is provided, or to your own local church, because the ministries of, of God in this time are so vitally important. 
They're important every day, but with so many people in need and in want. I pray that God's church is able to answer those needs with the great generosity and abundance that I know lives and resides within the people of God. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for these gifts and for the hearts that you have transformed and inspired to extend them in ministry. God, we pray over the ministry of this church and every church in which your Holy Spirit dwells. God, help, help all of us to come together to witness the good news of Jesus Christ. Help us to be a model showing what it means to love our neighbors. And God, give fruit to our efforts, because we know without your influence, without your help, we can do nothing. All glory and honor is yours, now and forever, almighty Father. Amen. Now is the time in our worship service that I am privileged to be able to share with you the Word of God. And I'd like to begin by sharing with you uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8-15. through 15. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hastening, the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of the Lord as salvation, so also our beloved brother Paul wrote to you, according to the wisdom given him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I also would like to share with you a few other scriptures that, it's, that talk about peace, because peace is an important topic in the Bible, and it, it is talked about in several different ways at several different times, and with this being a Sunday of peace, I thought it would be, would be helpful to hear those. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33, it says, For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. In John 14, 27, it says, Peace I give unto you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let your hearts not be troubled, neither let them be afraid. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. 
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, in Isaiah 32, 17 through 18, and the effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. My people will abide in peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. As I was reflecting on the topic of peace for this Sunday, I was thinking back to my time in high school. You see, I studied physics in high school. I had a really good teacher by the name of Mr. Templemeyer. And as we were studying physics, we came up across something called Heisenberg's Principle of Uncertainty. Like, I didn't know I was going to get a science lecture today. Don't worry, it's brief, but it, it relates. Heisenberg's Principle of Uncertainty basically says, with a particle, you can either know its momentum or its location. The more certain you are of its location, the less certain you are of its momentum. The more certain you are of its momentum, the less certain you are of its location. You can't know both to any degree of accuracy. And it seems to be a truth in the world that from the very microscopic to the macroscopic to the world around us, that uncertainty just seems to be a part of our experience. There's a lot of unpredictable stuff that goes on. The fact that we're out here I, I couldn't have told you that a year ago, that we'd be out worshiping in the parking lot. I couldn't have told you half the stuff that happened this year. And it seems sometimes that uncertainty is the enemy of peace. Because it's certainly upsetting, it certainly changes things, having to, to adapt the way that we have this last year. Sometimes, sometimes we like a little bit of uncertainty. I mean, you might think about a roller coaster. You may hate those. I did for a long time. Then, then I got old enough, I went on one, and I like the excitement. There's a certain amount of uncertainty with the excitement. But it's somewhat predictable, right? Because you choose to go on a roller coaster. We like predictability. We like order. Sometimes we'll even prefer bad order to uncertainty. You know, it might be tough, it might be painful, but at least I know what's gonna happen. And we long for that. I want you guys to do a little imagination exercise with me. I want you to imagine moving into an apartment and the night you move in, you notice something that you hadn't noticed the day before when you toured the apartment. You see, it seems as you lay down in your bed, you notice that the car lot that's outside your bedroom window, across the parking lot, on the other side of a fence, that they have their lights strategically planted to shine right down in your bedroom. You draw the blinds, but that doesn't do any good. And you lay awake, pondering what to do. So you get the blackout curtains, you sleep with a sheet over your bed, over your head, you do everything you can, and you're still not getting great sleep. So you decide, well, I'll, I'll sleep during the day. I'll change my hours, I'll rearrange things. And that morning, when you get up, there's this loud noise. You see, it seems that the landlord decided now was a good time to do construction, to update and repair the apartment complex you moved into. And you find out that's going to go on for weeks. And it starts in the morning and it goes to the early afternoon. So you, you decide, okay, I'm going to rearrange things again. I'm going to, to change my schedule so I can sleep in that brief gap in the afternoon before, after the sound stops from the construction and before the lights come on at the parking lot. You finally get that all done. You lay down, you go to sleep, and it's then that you discover your upstairs neighbor has just had a baby. And they like to cry right at that time, every day. Sometimes it seems like life 
is an unceasing and interminable string of disruptions with us on an equally interminable pilgrimage trying to find peace. I think everybody can pick out their most favorite disruption of the past year. In fact, the fact that we are out here once again embracing the Wesleyan tradition of an open-air worship is a mark of just one of these on our lives. In a conversation that I had with a colleague of mine, Pastor Mick King, we were reflecting on how turmoil and disruption seem to exist in every age of humanity. That like the apartment tenant, people seem to be going from one conflict or struggle to the next, to the next, to the next throughout history. And you have to ask yourself, where is the peace? Where is this peace scripture is telling us about? When we think about this and our history, this can either be very discouraging or profoundly encouraging. In the Charles Wesley hymn, And Are We Yet Alive? If we look at the third and the fourth verse, it says, What troubles we have seen, what mighty conflicts past, fightings without and fears within, since we assembled last. Yet out of all the Lord hath brought us by his love, and still he doth help us afford, and hides our life above. Now this is a hymn that we in Missouri at our annual conference sing every year, including this year. And this third verse is always very poignant because it talks about the conflicts and the struggles that we experience and the fears that we hold inside ourselves. backyards. You can't avoid it. You can't close your eyes to it. It's abundantly apparent because it's in everyone's backyard. But this is not new. The brokenness of the world is merely more clearly now before our eyes. So God is not inviting us to peace only when the world is at peace. In fact, God God's never invited us to peace when there was peace. Always when the world is not at peace. You see, if we, like the apartment resident, are waiting for the world to quiet down, to stop being broken, so that we can finally get some peace, we're going to wait a long, long, long time. There will always be another wrinkle there will always be another upset. There will always be another tribulation to wait through. Yet scripture tells us that it isn't the absence of these things that brings peace, but, but rather the presence of God that brings peace. As the hymn goes, God brings us through this life by his love and offers grace and help. In this Truth in this gift we find our peace. Within God's steadfast love we find peace. In each age the love of God was present, carrying the church through, carrying the people of God through the challenges of the past, and even now God is vitally alive and moving. God is at work in our world in the here and now. Where others might be tempted to run from or avoid places that, that can save suffering, God rushes in to tend and to care, bringing peace into the midst of strife. You see, God doesn't avoid conflict. Some of us don't like conflict very much, but God, God rushes in because he seeks to resolve conflict with love. The world may seem chaotic, it may seem scary at times, but when we remember who brings order to chaos, whose steadfast and unending love have 
been unshaken throughout the ages, throughout the struggles, and throughout all of the past, that this love and this relationship is freely offered by the grace of Jesus Christ to us. It is in this that we may find our peace. Peace in times of tumult, peace in times of sorrow, peace in times of difficulty and upheaval, peace in times of anxiety. It is this peace that allows us to be peacemakers, to lead others to that anchor of faith. It is this peace that allows me to wake up for the third time in the middle of the night to William's breathing alarm going off, to his cries, to his talking and jibber-jabbering, to nobody in particular, while my brain says I'm longing for sleep, to still be joyous about the gift that God has given me in this opportunity to care for one so precious as William. I wonder if we might take that perspective in our here and now, when we're frustrated, when we're tired, when we're worn out, and we look on our surroundings the same way, with our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, all, the great gifts from God that they are, so precious that Christ suffered death on a cross for them that we too have been given the gift of caring for ones so precious to answer their cries, to share the peace that passes understanding with those who flounder under the weight of the sufferings of this world. Let us share the Prince of Peace, the breaking in of God, the person of Jesus Christ, that steadies our hearts in all places, at all times. Let us share him with the world in our words, in our actions, that others might be led to the peace that cannot be stopped, even within the very heart of turmoil. Peace isn't the absence of the broken world. Peace is the presence of God within it, within us. It's that relationship that studies us, and it's a relationship that is open to everybody. Today we get to experience the grace of God in Holy Communion. It's an invitation that is given by God to all God's people. We have an open table because the invitation isn't one I'm making. It isn't one the Methodist Church makes. It's one God makes to every single soul. And you have the opportunity to say yes to that and invite the peace and the love of God into your life. For those gathered here, as I come around with communion, I want you guys to be thinking about the people in your life that you might already be planning to come into contact with this week that might not get communion somewhere else. If you feel moved to share it with them, I invite you just to let me know how many more elements of communion that you need. You take as many as you want, that we might share that peace and that grace of God with everyone. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow in his likeness. Let us draw near with our faith, make our humble confessions, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. Holy God, we do not presume to come to this your table, trusting in our own goodness, but rather in your unfailing mercies. We are not worthy that you should receive us, but give your word and we shall be healed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Hear the good news. Christ died while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You made us in your image to love and to be loved. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now with the confidence as children of God, we pray the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power the glory forever. Amen. God has given us a, a wonderful gift. God has invited us to be a family. 
to be brothers and sisters all, to have God as our Father, Christ as our Redeemer, to live in a world that may be one challenge after the next, that may be disruptive, that may be difficult, that may be scary and sad and, and discouraging at times. But God has invited us to have his peace, to have the assurance of knowing Christ's victory, not just in some distant future, but in the here and now. God has given us the gift of knowing that he is with us and that he loves us and that nothing can stop that. We remember that this day. We remember the great act of Jesus Christ, the perfect expression of love that saves us. And we give you thanks, Almighty God. May this gift be received by every person. May every person come to the understanding of how truly precious they are to you. And God, may we realize that about our neighbors as well. We give thanks to you for this and all things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in our closing hymn. It is one of our holiday favorites. It is, and I have to find, find it, it came upon a midnight clear. We will be singing three verses. wonderful that in the midst of such, such, such sorrow, such grieving, such weariness, we have the gift of Christ. We have the hope of Christmas. We have the knowledge that through each year, and this is the beginning of the Christian year, that through each year we have the renewed promise of Jesus Christ that he will travel with us through whatever comes our way. Right now, we have a lot of people that God has gifted us to care for, to love on. And I hope that into every situation, into every interaction that you have this season, that you bring the peace of Christ. Because there's a lot of people, sometimes me, struggling to find it. But it's there to be had all the time. And if you're struggling, if you're having a hard time with it, 
It's okay. We're human. We need God. That's just a sign that we need God. And I hope it's my privilege or the privilege of the person sitting next to you right now to remind you, you may need him, but it's okay because he's there. He's always there for you, with you, loving you. And nothing can stop that. Not the present circumstances, not whatever's gonna happen in 2021, not even death can stop the love of Jesus Christ. And for that, I give thanks. May that peace that passes all understanding go with you from now and through eternity.